Ever since the launch of the new Shimano EP8, you could say we've got ourselves and the drive unit into some pretty compromising situations. We've challenged the up as well as the down, the along and the across, double the pain, triple the fun, and a whole lot in between. A huge range of bikes then sporting EP8 have been the victims of some healthy abuse on some pretty wholesome trails. So we'd like to share our thoughts and feelings on how to get the most out of the drive and hopefully give you an insight to just how flexible it is. Because if you think it's just about eco trail and boost, then think again. And this, my friends, is that big box of fun, except it's actually pretty compact and not really that much bigger than my hand. But have no doubt about it, that little motor certainly does pack a punch. And from man-made single track to wild open mountain, technical uphill and downhill on a variety of bikes, sizes and component specs, we've kind of got a bit of history with this motor, which is why Canyon and Shimano have called on us via the Spectralon and that EP8 motor to share with you guys some of that insider knowledge. There's a lot to talk about with Shimano EP8 and I'm just gonna summarize things. Uh, so I'm really hoping that everyone's gonna get something out of this video depending on the viewpoint that they come from. So we're gonna be looking at such things as the rhythm of the motor, adjustability, app tuning, some rider tips, and also the system setup of your bike. Remember, it's not just about the motor and the battery. Yes, there is the hardware side of things to think about, but poor bike setup will not allow you to get the best out of EP8. So I'm gonna begin with the human element of this mechanical balancing act. Now all e-bike motors have their own character and it is vital to tune into the mood, the rhythm of the motor, the way it works, what makes it tick. To get the most out of it requires spinning the right cadence in the right mode and gear at every given moment. Now some people think that an e-bike will pull them out of trouble even if they're in the wrong gear, which is absolutely incorrect because riding an e-bike is a little bit like driving a good coffee machine. It does take a bit of practice. So for example, a heavy rider in the right gear will be faster than a light rider in the wrong gear. Don't forget to use the display on your ride. And I think one feature which you really should tune into is the cadence. Like I said, this motor really likes to spin at the right cadence and that range is around about 75 to 95 RPM. So use that as a way of just tuning into that rhythm of the cadence of the bike. I'm in trail mode, but look how quickly the motor spins up. Very soon I'm spinning too fast. I'm above the 25 kilometers an hour. I'm simply using my own effort. But there's ways to change all that. Learn to use your gears and anticipate changes in the terrain. I'm in gear six, switch into five, keep that momentum. You might actually need to be in a higher gear than you think. Learn to identify where the sweet spot is, the spin zone and the gearing. It might sound very simplistic to some people, but it really is so important. So that then is the physical side covered, how you the rider can tune in to the rhythm of that EP8 motor to get the very best out of it. But remember, there is a hardware side to the story as well. For example, up front you have a range of displays which you can switch into to customize the cockpit. And also you've got a range of controls to help you navigate your way through the modes. A key part of EP8 is certainly the on-bike adjustments because this really does open up the range for your motor and your battery combination. Now it's normally done via the display up on your handlebar here. So it's gonna talk you through a very simple change to your output, which can have a massive impact on your ride. So simply press the button at the base of it takes you to a menu and then simply scroll down and you'll come to 
Assist Customize. You press that once, it comes to two profiles. Now the high profile, profile one, it offers you a higher power, shorter range motor, whereas profile two actually lowers the power of your EP8 motor and therefore gives you a much wider range. Now we were on a recent trip uh, across the moors. We'd done 20, 26 miles. And I was really concerned that even though I'd been riding an Eco, I didn't quite know whether I'd get home or not. So I simply went from profile one to profile two. It dropped the power and I was able to make it home quite easily. So a really, really useful thing to tune into so you know what kind of range to expect from your motor. Now, so far we've talked about you, the rider, and also the stock settings which are accessed via the display and controls on your EP8 motored bike. But now it's time to maybe get yourselves acquainted with two apps. There's the eTube app and also the eTube Ride app, which is available to download onto your smartphone. And you can sign up and get access to some very, very cool features. Because so far, I mean, and don't get me wrong, the stock settings on that bike, such things as Profile 1, Profile 2, are marvellous. But these two apps really do allow you to fine tune the details of that motor. Now, first of all, folks, I'm going to talk about the eTube app because this really does uh, allow you to change the settings of your motor. Um, so you can change such things as the assist character, the maximum torque, and also the assist startup. So I'm going to go into some detail of each of those settings. Let's have a look then at the three ways you can alter the characteristics of your EPA motor. Now, first up is the assist characteristic. These changes will really affect the feel of the motor and how much the motor multiplies the power. A high setting gives you lots of assistance, meaning you do less, while lower means you need to put more of the donkey work in. Maximum torque will be particularly applicable to heavy riders and if you're riding on steep banks where it will be very noticeable. Remember, you can still get maximum power even with lower torque if you spin the right cadences. Like I said, tune in. And finally, the assist character startup means how quick the motor reacts when you stand on the pedals. It can be super lively or slower depending on the experience of the rider. And remember the conditions as well. Pete Travis is Shimano technical support at Madison and is super tuned in to EP8. He has some key info to get you rolling. Pete, we've got YouTube Project. What is YouTube Ride then? So YouTube Project app allows you to make customization changes to the system and it's something you won't use while you're actually using the bike or the system. Ichi Project Ride is an easy way of converting your smartphone into a display that can also um, work as a, a GPS unit. And also, once you've finished your ride, if you want to, you can upload the information that it gathers. Okay, so Pete, doesn't tell you things such as battery consumption, does it? Yeah, so it's, it's gathering more information than the standard display is displaying during normal use. It gives you increased metrics as, you, as you're using the system. Okay, cool. So there you go, folks. Go and uh, get your EP8, go and, sorry, get your YouTube app open and uh, have a fiddle of the settings and see just how versatile this EP8 motor is. Now, I know a lot of people who actually do get put off by the sheer amount of detail that's involved in it. But have no fear, it's pretty simple if you go uh, systematically through that menu. Now, the first thing I recommend is that you learn to understand what type of rider you are and the type of terrain that you're riding. And maybe, for example, you might ride in wet conditions like we are in the UK at the minute and also dry conditions. So that app certainly allows you to go for different, different seasonal adjustments for sure. Uh, I'd highly recommend that you do it out on the trail so you get a feel for what you're adjusting. Certainly do it one step at a time. Uh, and remember, it's the top setting, the assist character, which is gonna have the biggest effect uh, on the nature of your EP8 motor. Now, the torque setting will largely depend on your weight and your riding. But for heavier riders and steeper trails, definitely go for the max. Very often, it's actually good to have that really good acceleration response, enabling you to get the momentum to get up the hills.
Now, ET Ride, on the other hand, is a little bit of an extra. It allows you to record your route and all the details of your ride. Now, you can actually use this with a dongle and get do away with the display, but we highly recommend you don't do that because then you can't actually access the walk mode function on your bike. Now, because there's a faster chip in EP8, it actually allows you to connect to smartphones uh, and third-party devices such as Garmin really, really easily. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the bike we're using here today. Now, it's a Canyon Spectron, size extra large. I'm six foot. Um, it's got 150 mil travel front and rear. As you can see, there's a big beefy Fox 36 fork there up front. Um, the front part of the bike, front triangle, is carbon fiber, whereas the swinging arm, which comprises of the chain stay and the seat stay, is aluminium. Uh, 12 speed gears in the bike, 165 mil crank arms. Uh, we've got a one piece bar and stem on here, uh, an adjustable seat post in the Fox transfer, uh, and XCR gearing and 200 mil rotors, obviously, to anchor you up. Now, I've taken this bike on some pretty big adventures, and I think 150 mil travel is a great all round travel number for an e mountain bike. Okay, folks, well, we've got a great motor, a long range internal battery there, a display which gives you loads of information, and of course, that super stealth controller there on the handlebar. But those parts are simply just a part of the story because you really need to think, and I can't emphasize this enough, that an e-bike is actually a system, not just a collection of parts. So you really need to focus in on some of the details, such as having the right tires for the type of terrain that you ride in, the right tire pressures. And then moving on to the seat, you need to have a seat that fits you, which is comfortable, and also in the right position, forwards or rearwards. Uh, moving on to the handlebars, you need to get the correct height and width and also get your levers into the right position to suit your riding style and your comfort. And finally, and arguably most importantly, having your suspension set up correctly. Well, that's some setup covered. What about using it? Well, when I start off with climbing, arguably one of the most fun parts of owning an e-mounted bike. So I guess uh, without further ado, let's just stick it in boost and get up the hill. Uh, no, only kidding. Seriously, the EP8, as we've seen, is quite a complex motor, um, as I mentioned from the motor tuning. Um, so first of all, I want to cover off a few things uh, before we go into the details of climbing. I think there's actually three main things. Your seat position, your tires, and your suspension. Uh, starting off with the seat. Now, if your seat is too far back, that means too much weight over the rear of the bike. Front wheel in the air, no control of your e-bike. Second up, tires. Now, if you've got tires which are too hard a compound, you're gonna find it very, very difficult to find grip uh, in wet, slippery conditions. So go for a softer compound tire uh, and get the pressures around about 20 to 30 PSI, depend, depending on your weight. And finally, the suspension. Now, think of the suspension as what you wanna be doing as you're climbing is you need to be rocking backwards and forwards, trying to get grip on the back tire and weight and control on the front tire. What you don't wanna be doing is tumbling upwards and backwards uh, on a hill climb. And the reason you might do that is because you've simply got not enough air in your shock or your fork. So you're doing this crazy position. What you're gonna be doing is like I said, gently rocking back and forth, getting up that hill. Okay, let's get rolling then. Uh, first up, don't stand up when you're climbing. Uh, an e-bike motor, especially the EPA motor, doesn't actually like you standing on it because the cadence really spins up quite quickly. Uh, and also, you lose traction if you're on a slippy bank. Second point is if you're on a gravel climb, uh, make sure you're in a eco or trail mode because if you're in turbo, you'll easily get up to that 25K or 30K limit very quickly and so you'll be pedaling under your own steam. So we've spoken about how understanding the rhythm of the EP8 motor is central to getting the most out of it, but so too is anticipation. And anticipation is actually linked into making sure that that EP8 motor is spinning over correctly. So we've got a situation here, we've got 
a breaker slope, so I'm gonna probably be in a certain gear, but what I need to understand is, you can see the ground's higher above me, so it's highly likely that I might need to change down a gear to keep that motor spinning. So, like I said, anticipation, looking ahead, keeping that motor spinning, very, very important. Okay, so having gear six, done the corner, switch into five, keep that momentum. Pedals go slightly too slow, but still I got up there. So you can see how quickly the cadence drops. What you need to do is keep that motor bubbling over. Having your seat up, like you might have done for decades on your mountain bike, isn't gonna allow you to maximize changes in your body position or grip. So go from seat up, seat down, and it pushes that center of gravity downwards, more traction on the tire, and up to go. Because an e-bike's got more stability and grip, it's important to drive hard into the corners and try and carve your way up a hill. I could actually do a whole section just on tires and their relationship to your EP8 motor and battery because they have a significant effect on what you do, where you can climb, and also the range that you get out of them. A quick tip, if you've got a mate who is significantly lighter and has a bike which might be a bit more powerful, then you could actually speed ahead of them just by being sharp on the tire choice of your bike. You could be looking at an extra lap of the trail center, a couple of extra climbs just by having different rubber. Flip that and you'd be able to climb steeper banks and gain more confidence descending. Your bike will also need an update from time to time. So back to Pete on some maintenance tips. With the, with the increased functionality that comes with the, with the EP8 system is that it will actually be logging potential errors within, within the system that can be um, displayed when you connect to it via the YouTube project app. So say you are experiencing a problem, it may be that the system logs an error and it will display it through the maintenance tab on the app. So when you go and try and problem solve that, either through all the help that's available in the FAQ section on the YouTube project website, ah, and right. also through the... So you're gonna go home then and you can log into your computer and you can, you can, you can check all this stuff you can look up a potential fix to the, to the problem that you've had. And one final thing, do not underestimate just how capable an EP8 motored bike is on a hill climb, even with hard compound low profile tires. And that's simply because of the slightly added weight of an e-mountain bike. But as I mentioned in the beginning, it's all about the system. It's the tire compound, tire pressure, the mode you're riding, and also remember those profiles, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, folks, hope that's helped with some tips there. Uh, I know one thing is for sure that on a personal level, I think there is a lot of self-exploration that everybody needs to do with the EPA motor. And I'm continually trying to find the limits of the technical climbing ability of this motor. In fact, if you want to see the range, the diversity of terrain, uh, what a bike like this, the Spectralon 150 mil travel can do, have a look at this video which I've done here. Uh, which leaves one last thing. I think it's really important to, for you to work out the range which you can do on your bike in different modes, different tires, both vertically and horizontally, because that gives you a peace of mind in uh, what you can do when you're out and about in the hills, the fire roads, or the mountains. That's it, folks. See you next time.